Hello and welcome back. In this video I want to begin discussing free fall motion. So this is a very specific example in which an object will experience a constant acceleration. So anytime an object is dropped near the surface of the earth, the object will accelerate towards the ground with an acceleration that's approximately equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Now a few things I should mention about vertical motion before we jump into any examples. Uh, first when we describe the height of an object, when we talk about vertical motion, we typically use y to describe the position of the object and delta y to describe the change in the height of the object, as opposed to x and delta x in the previous video. The reason we do this is that in the next video, when we begin to talk about two-dimensional motion, you'll see that we use x and delta x to describe the change in the horizontal position, and y and delta y to describe the change in the vertical position of the object. Another thing I should mention is that when we talk about vertical uh, positions of the object, we generally refer to up as being the positive direction and down as being the negative direction. So this means my acceleration due to gravity is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared because the acceleration due to gravity points down, which is the negative direction. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of examples. The first example says, a rocket is launched from the top of a 100 meter building. The rocket is launched vertically upwards with an initial speed of 30 meters per second. What is the speed of the rocket when it hits the ground? Okay, so remember the very first thing we want to do whenever we have a word problem is you want to figure out what information was given to you and what, what we're trying to solve. So looking at this, uh, my initial speed was plus 30 meters per second. The object's in free fall, so I know my acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Now one other bit of information, if we think about this, the rocket is launched from the top of a 100 meter building and we're asked to find the velocity when it hits the ground. So delta y, the change in the rocket's height, this is final height minus initial height, the final height of the object is when it hits the ground. The initial height was when it was at the top of a 100 meter building. So the change in my height is minus 100 meters, right? Because the object moved downwards. So the change in my position was negative because it moved downwards. And then finally, what I was asked to solve for was V final. I was asked, what is the speed of the rocket when it hits the ground? Okay. Looking at this uh, set of known and unknown variables that I have here, uh, notice that I'm asked to find the final velocity and I'm not given delta t. So right away this should tell you that the equation we want to use is v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta y. Notice I use delta y here instead of delta x because we're talking about the vertical motion of the object. So I want to solve for v final, we get v final is equal to v initial squared plus 2a delta y square rooted. So this is going to be 30 meters per second squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 meters per second squared times minus 100 meters. And we'll take the whole square root of this. So if you plug this into a calculator, you should see that this is equal to 53.5 meters per second. Now one thing I want to really emphasize about this is that notice that if I had made a mistake and say for example I said my displacement was plus 100 meters instead of negative 100 meters then this equation wouldn't give me the right answer, right? I'd have, I'd probably have the square root of a negative number, right? I, I don't know. Uh, I think, yeah, this is going to give me 900 and this is going to give me a number that's bigger than 900, so I'd be subtracting something that's larger than what I started with, so I'd have a negative number. And remember, you can't take the square root of a negative number. That's going to give you something that's imaginary. I can have an imaginary velocity. That doesn't make any sense, right? So if you have something like this where you're taking the square root of a negative number, if you had made a mistake here and you had a negative number, you should always go back and figure out where the mistake came from. A lot of times I'll see students, they'll have a square root of a negative number and they'll just drop the negative sign. They'll just get rid of it. And that's not going to work, right? I mean, if I drop this negative sign, then it would be taking this thing here 
minus this. Okay, if I had messed up and I just dropped a negative sign, I'd be taking this part here on the right minus this thing on the left. That's not the same thing as adding them together. It's going to give me a completely different answer, and it's going to be the wrong answer. So anytime you have a negative number in the square root, you really do want to track down where that negative sign came from, okay? Because chances are you made a mistake somewhere back, and if you just drop the negative sign inside the square root, you're not going to get the right answer. Now, one thing that's very useful to understand about free fall motion is that free fall motion exhibits symmetry that we can use to help simplify a lot of problems. So if I consider, for example, the position of the object plotted versus time, if we think about this, right, so if you throw an object vertically up, it's going to travel up, it's going to reach the top of its trajectory, and then it's going to come back down. And we can see, just looking at this graph, if you just think about it, it makes sense that the motion of the object is going to be symmetric about the top of its trajectory. So the path that it takes going up towards the top of its trajectory is just a mirror image of the path it takes as it falls back down. Okay. Looking at this, we can see some other things as well. The amount of time it takes for the object to reach the top of its trajectory is equal to the amount of time it takes for the object to fall back down to its initial height. Now if we look at the velocity, we see sort of this opposite thing. The velocity is anti-symmetric about v top. So what this means is if I consider some point right here, say delta t after the point where I'm at the top of my trajectory, my velocity right here is minus the velocity I had at some time delta t before I reached the top of my trajectory. Okay, so my velocity here, maybe it's some v, and at this point it's minus v. Okay. So this is very important, right? So this means that if I throw an object upwards, so it's moving with an initial velocity v0 in the positive direction, when the object returns back to its initial height, it's going to be moving downwards with the same speed that the object was thrown upwards with, but now it's going to be moving downwards, so it'll be in the opposite direction. Now, using this symmetry, we can come up with a couple additional formulas that are really useful that work for free fall motion. So looking at the previous slide, so I want to try to figure out what the time it is, the amount of time it takes for the object to reach the top of its trajectory. So looking at this, right, when the object reaches the top of its trajectory, the velocity is going to be zero, right? It's going to move up, it's going to reach the top of its trajectory, and just for a moment it's going to, it's going to be motionless. It's going to be, uh, its velocity will go to zero before it starts to accelerate back down. Okay? So, using this, I can use the formula A is equal to delta V over delta T, which is V final minus V initial over delta T. So my final velocity, if that's at the top of my trajectory, final velocity is zero. So this is just minus V naught over delta T. So if I solve for delta T, I see that delta t is equal to minus v naught divided by my acceleration, which is going to be minus g, or just v naught over g. So that's the amount of time it takes for the object to reach the top of its trajectory. So what happens if I throw an object vertically up with an initial velocity v naught, and I want to calculate how long it takes before the object falls back to the ground? Well. Again, remember there's a symmetry here. The amount of time it takes for the object to reach the top of its trajectory is equal to the amount of time it takes for the object to then fall back down from that point to the ground. So the total amount of time is the amount of time it takes for the object to reach the top of its trajectory times two, right? That's this part reaching the top of the trajectory, and then it takes the same amount of time to go from the top of the, tra the trajectory back to the initial height. So the amount of time it takes for the object to go all the way up, reach the top of its trajectory, and then come back to the initial height is just 2 v naught over g. Notice I could actually calculate this going all the way back to this formula right here. Delta v, if we think about this, v final minus v initial, well, again, remember we have this uh, anti-symmetric velocity, okay? So my final velocity is minus my initial velocity. So we'd have minus v naught minus v naught. This is minus 2 v naught. And then I'd take this and divide it by negative g, which was my acceleration. So that's another way to get it, the same formula here. 
So let's go ahead and see how the symmetry can be used to make problems a little bit easier. So this question says, consider a rocket, consider the rocket from the previous example. Recall that the rocket is launched vertically upwards from the top of a 100 meter building. The rocket left the ground with an initial speed of 100 meters per second, and its engines burn almost immediately. What is the maximum height achieved by the rocket? So again, we want to get our initial uh, values. Uh, so what is it we know? So we know the initial velocity is 30 meters per second. My acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. I don't really care that it's on the top of a 100 meter building anymore. I want to know how high it's going to go when it reaches the top of its trajectory. So this is delta y is what I'm trying to find. And if we think about this, so I'm trying to find the change in the height for when the object reaches the top of its trajectory. So when the object reaches the top of its trajectory, that's my final point here, my final velocity is going to be 0 meters per second. That's what we found here when we were talking about symmetry, right? At the top of the trajectory, the velocity goes to 0. So with this information, it's very easy to find the maximum height, okay? So notice again, I have, I, I'm given the initial acceleration and the final, and I'm trying to find delta y, okay? So the formula we should use for that is again, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta y. This time I'm solving for delta y, so I'm gonna subtract v initial and divide by 2a, so I get delta y is equal to v final squared minus v initial squared divided by 2a. Plugging all my known and unknown variables into this formula, so if I just type this into a calculator, uh, let's see, I need to look at my cheat sheet here. Uh, this should give me 45.9 meters. So that's how high the rocket's gonna go. So the next example asks, how high would the rocket have gone if it was launched with twice its initial speed? So in the previous slide, right, we found this formula right here. Actually, I should have mentioned, uh, I could simplify this a little bit because I know that v final is zero. So this is v initial squared divided by two g. So looking at this formula, if v naught was twice as big, right, then this numerator is gonna be four times bigger, right? So I'm gonna take something that's twice as big and I'm gonna square it, right? You take two, you square it, you get four, right? So if I take something twice as big, I square it, I get something that's four times as big. So my delta y is just gonna be four times this height right here. So if it was launched vertically upwards with twice its initial speed, then delta y would be equal to four times the delta y from the previous example, which is 184 meters. So I think this is the last example here. This example says, at the same moment that the rocket is launched vertically upwards with a speed of 30 meters per second, an identical rocket is gonna be launched downwards with the same speed. And the question asks, how much longer does it take for the rocket that was launched vertically upwards to hit the ground? So this is an excellent example where we can use symmetry to really simplify the problem. So if we think about this, Right, I've got a rocket that's launched vertically upwards, so it's going to travel up, it's going to reach the top of its trajectory, it's going to come back down, it'll return to its initial height, and then it'll keep falling down. And then we have the rocket that was launched vertically down, where it's just going to travel straight down. Okay? So if we think about this, right, initially the rocket that was launched vertically upwards, it was moving up with some initial velocity v naught. When it returns back to its initial height, when it's over here, it's gonna be moving downwards with a velocity minus v naught, so it's gonna be moving down. Notice that this velocity right here was the same velocity that was given to the rocket that was launched down, right? So the rocket's at the same height, it's moving with the same speed in the same direction. So from this point right here, this rocket's gonna travel the same way that the rocket that was launched vertically downwards, right? So this amount of time right here, the amount of time it took for the rocket to go up and then come back down to its initial height. That's the same amount of time between these two points, you know, for, for all these points as the rocket falls to the ground, right? Because at this point, the rocket's gonna fall to the ground in exactly the same way as the rocket that was launched vertically downwards, right? So whatever amount of time it takes for the rocket to 
fall to the ground from this point, well, it's the same amount of time as the rock that was launched vertically downwards. It was the amount of time it took for that rocket to hit the ground, right? So the only extra time it took was the amount of time it took for the rocket to come back, to go up to the top of its trajectory and then come back down. Because from that point on, it's the same amount of time for those two rockets to go from that point down to the ground. So all we need to do is find the amount of time it takes for the rocket to go up to the top of its trajectory and come back down. Well, in this case, right, we know from symmetry, we saw here that if I'm moving upwards with an initial velocity v naught, then when I reach, uh, the, when I come back down to my uh, initial height, my velocity is going to be minus my initial velocity. So delta v, actually let me just say v final, is minus 30 meters per second. So using this, and now I can just use the definition of acceleration to find delta t. Acceleration is delta v over delta t, so delta t is equal to delta v over a. Delta v in this case is minus 2 v naught, and my acceleration is minus g. So if I plug these numbers into a calculator, I should get that this is equal to 6.12 seconds. All right, so if I just take 60 uh, meters per second and divide by 9.8 meters per second squared, I get that that's equal to 6.12 seconds. So at this point, I think I'm going to uh, just kind of wrap things up real quickly. So the general strategy, whenever you're asked to solve any kind of kinematic problem, the first thing you want to do is you want to read the problem and figure out what is the question asking and what were your known and unknown variables. So you want to figure out what is it asking you to solve for and what were the things that it gave you. Okay. Another thing you want to do is you want to establish a sign convention. Okay. So you want to figure out what direction is going to be positive and what direction is going to be negative. So it's vertical motion, up is positive and down is negative. Okay. If it's horizontal motion, you just have to pick a convention and stick with it. This is important, though, because when you write down your known and unknown variables, you want to pay attention to the sign. You want to make sure you uh, give these variables the appropriate sign. So if an object fell downwards, delta y is going to be negative. Acceleration due to gravity points downward, so it's a negative. The next thing you want to do is you want to see if the problem can be simplified using symmetry, or if maybe there's some additional information you can extract because of symmetry. So for example, if you're trying to figure out the amount of time it takes for the object to return to its initial height, or the amount of time it takes for the object to reach the top of its trajectory, or where the top of its trajectory is, or something like that, you can use the fact that at the top of the trajectory, the final velocity is zero. Or if the object returns to its initial height, the final velocity was minus the initial height. So that's additional information that you can use as a known variable when you're trying to solve a problem. Now, once you know what your known and unknown variables are, you want to start looking at your kinematic equations. And you want to see if there's any kinematic equation you can look at where there's just one unknown variable. Okay? If that unknown variable was what you were asked to solve for, then all you got to do is solve for that variable and you're done. Now, if the unknown variable from that equation wasn't what you were asked to solve for, once you solve for that unknown variable, you should then be able to look at your other kinematic equations and at that point, you should have a kinematic equation that you can use to solve for your un the, the, the thing that you were asked to solve for. Okay? So at this point, I think I'd like to end this video. And in the next lecture, I want to talk about motion in two dimensions. So for example, what happens if you throw an object at something like, say, 30 degrees above the horizontal instead of launching a rocket vertically upwards or throwing an object vertically upwards? And, I know this looks very, very complicated. It's actually not quite so bad because uh, in the x direction, most of the time for free fall, you don't have uh, any acceleration. So it turns out we just have one equation for the x direction, and then we have our normal kinematic equations we talked about in this video describing the vertical motion. But I'll talk more about that in the next video.